Good morning, language warriors. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my show. How's everyone doing? Good morning to you. It is Sunday, March the 12th, and it is, uh, it's cold today. We, we had a little bit of snow last night, just a little bit. So it's uh, zero degrees right now here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, it's cold, yeah. Hello, Hiba. Hello, Stir. Hello, Yoldas. Hello, Enas and Zara. Hello, Hafsa and Ragda. Hello, Yuri. Happy birthday, Hafsa. <clears throat> Hello, Sunshine. So, uh, yes, welcome, everybody. Uh, once again, this is English Origins, my Sunday morning live stream. And uh, what is English Origins? Well, we're going to talk about something I enjoy. It's one of my hobbies called etymology. Etymology means the origin of words. Where do words come from? How did we create that word? Um, so it's basically word history. It's word history. Okay, and etymology is very, very, very useful for people who are non-native speakers of English. Okay, so that's one of the things I like to teach, and that's what I do every Sunday morning. That's right, the roots of the words. Word history. Word history, everyone. I really wish we, you know... I think this should be a class in school. I think that you should learn this when you learn English. I mean, I mean, uh, not you. I mean, Americans. I think that etymology should be something we start learning in high school. They don't. They don't teach this. This is something that I, I learned by accident, <laughs> I learned etymology by accident because the first language that I chose to study when I was 15 was Latin. And uh, Latin is a terribly difficult language. That's why no one speaks it anymore. <laughs> but uh, it's a very useful language. Because Latin is the root language of Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, Romanian. So if you learn a little bit of Latin, it, it helps you understand all of those languages. Okay? And for you, for you, why is etymology important for you? Well, English is a unique language because it's a language that borrows or steals other words from other languages more than most languages do. More than most languages do. So every language takes some words from other languages, but English... We have words that come from Latin. We have words that come from Greek. We have words that come from German. We have words that come from French. We have words that come from Chinese. We have words that come from Arabic. We have words that come from uh, Gaelic. We have words that come from um, Spanish. We have words that come from many, 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 many places. And when we take words from different places, we also take the uh, 
the spelling sometimes. We also take the pronunciation sometimes. We also take um, just like the, 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 the general way you say things. You know, we might steal that, that way of saying it from another language. Okay? And yes, Yuki, I'm a drummer. That's right. I am a drummer. So, um, who's new? Who's new here? Who's seeing me for the first time today? Anyone? Shane, you're new. Welcome, Shane. You joined a week ago, Ragda. Okay, welcome. Second time, okay, all right. All right, well then let me give you just a little bit of background for those people, the new people here. Hi. <laughs> My name is Teacher Mark, and yes, because you call me Teacher Mark, that means I'm a teacher. Yes, that's my job. Okay? It's one of my jobs. I have many jobs. My job is being me. So, am I a drummer? Yes, I'm a drummer. And yes, I get paid to do that. And by the way, yesterday... Yesterday, someone was talking to me about music and, you know, uh, it was somebody from China and they were talking about, you know, it, can you make money playing music or can you have a good living? And that's why nobody wants you to become a musician. Let me explain something that's actually very important to understand. Yes, it's true that if you live in China, your parents don't want you to become a musician. If you live in America, your parents don't want you to become a musician. But, 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 you can make a pretty good living here playing music. Okay? So I did a search yesterday to see what's the average amount that a musician, a professional musician, gets paid in the United States. What's the average amount? Okay, now that's for all of the musicians. That's a lot of different people. Okay, that's orchestra workers. That's uh, bar musicians. That's, you know, private teachers. That's many different musicians. But the average pay is about $39,000 U.S. per year. Okay, so... Is that a lot of money? No, it's not a lot of money. It's not. But I also looked up the beginning, the basic beginning salary for uh, an accountant. So let me see here. Accountant. Average salary. So an accountant makes about double that. About double that. So the beginning salary for an accountant is about 49000 Okay, so about 10000 more than this. Okay, so if you have two choices in life, one, you can become an accountant and maybe make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year. Or the other one, you become a drummer or guitar player and you make $40,000 a year, $35,000 a year. Okay, so yes, you make less money, but I would still rather be a drummer than be an accountant. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. Y you forget the one part about being a musician is that I like my job. I like my job, and that's worth at least $100,000 to me. So if the, if the average pay for a musician in the United States is $39,000, add $100,000 to that, because a musician likes what they do. 
that matters. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to to tell you guys that the difference is in China, there's not a big music scene for professional musicians. There's not. Not compared to here. Okay, so for example, uh, anyone here from Beijing? Is there anyone here from Beijing? Yo, Beijing, Renma. Daja. Shanghai, okay. Jessica, yes, I am. Okay, so Shanghai is a little bit different, but Beijing. How many, how many, how many restaurants or bars or clubs do you think there are in Beijing that have live paid music? How many? In like, just guess. Just give me a guess. How many? A hundred. 10, 20, how many, how many do you think, if you, if you had to take a guess? If I had to take a guess, right, Jessica said maybe 80. Okay, so that's Beijing. Okay, Beijing is a huge city. All right? I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a much smaller city, but my city, my city probably has 200 bars that you can play music in. And that's just my tiny city. So there's, there are many, many, many more places here that you can perform. So you can make a living playing music in America. No, you won't be rich. Most people will not be rich playing music. But, um, right, Sunshine says 5,000 restaurants and bars. But no, no, no. I did not say restaurants and bars. I said restaurants in bars with live music. <laughs> with live music. Yeah, so I'm talking about that. Okay? My city is maybe... A hundred times smaller than Beijing, but we have probably 200 bars and restaurants where you can play music. Okay? Uh, Yoldas, I'm not going to play any drums right now. It's too early. It's 8.30 in the morning here. My neighbors will not like that. <laughs> okay? So... Uh, You'll have to just wait and watch me play drums another time, or you can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch me play drums there, okay? But the point is, I just wanted to, to say that the guy from China yesterday was kind of implying that only rich people can be musicians. No, that's completely ridiculous. That is how it is in China. It's a very unique, interesting thing. In Asia, in Asia... Many of the musicians or artists, they come from very rich families. They come from very well-to-do families. And that's actually one of the ways they can show how rich they are. Their kids don't have to get a regular job. Their kids can do art. Okay? But in America, it's not really that way. Okay, if you want to be an, a, a, a musician or an artist in America, then you have to work for it. It's not an easy thing to do, but uh, it's a, a fun thing to do. Anyway, uh, okay, let me see here. Yes, let's get to our topic for today. We're going to talk about etymology. Nora wants me to say the words water and tomorrow. Nora, the word water, when you say it slowly, you say water. When you say it quickly, with an American accent, you say water. That's true for most English words in America. When you say it slowly, it's a hard T. When you say it more quickly, it's a soft D. Okay?
Am I a YouTuber? Uh, yes and no. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't really do a lot with it yet, but I will be soon because I bought a computer just so I can. <clears throat> good morning, Tanya. Hello, Bellin. Good morning. Where do I have so much energy from? I don't know. I don't know why you guys think I have some. Do I really have that much more energy than most people? I don't know. I just, I, I'm just me. I just, I just, <laughs> I, I wake up and I have my coffee. My coffee certainly helps me have energy. But I'm tired again. Uh, today is daylight savings time, so now I have to change my, my teaching schedule all over again. Every year we have to change the time twice, right? It's annoying. And so I didn't sleep really well last night, and I had to wake up early this morning. Um, and I don't make money, but why am I here? Because I like what I do. I enjoy teaching. Okay. And I believe in myself, so I believe that this will become something successful. So I give everything I have. Why do I have so much energy? Because I'm not working for someone else. I'm working for me. So of course I want to give everything I have. Because it's my goals, my dreams, my class streams. What about a dentist? Dentists in America, Sam, dentists make a lot of money, sure, but there's a very wide range. It's very weird about dentist work, dentistry here in America. You can go to one dentist over here and pay this amount of money, but then across the street, the other dentist who does the same thing will charge a completely different price, maybe a lot more expensive or maybe a lot cheaper. So being a dentist, the prices are all over the place. Uh, <clears throat> Bellin wants me to talk about how to use due to and because of. Sure, I can do that for you. Uh... So, due to is the same thing as because, um, but it's a little bit more formal. Okay? So, in most cases, Bellin, you can just use the word because. Because is always safe. Because is always... I think the word because is not formal or informal. It's just useful. Okay? Um, but... Make sure you use the full word, because, not cuz. Okay, it's very, it's very common today for people to say, why do you like that? Because uh, it's fun. Okay, and that's fine. Most of the time, it's totally okay. It's colloquially accepted to use the word cuz, C-U-Z, as a substitute for because. But... That's very informal. So because of is or because is just neutral. It's not formal. It's not uh, uh, slang or informal. It's just neutral. But due to is more formal. So maybe they they use that word, the, the words due to, they use that that phrase when we're talking about canceling a baseball game because of weather. Maybe the the announcement will say, due to weather, you know, due to inclement weather, inclement means bad, due to inclement weather, the game has been canceled. Okay? Now, that's how the official statement will say. They'll say, due to, right? But if someone says to you, if they ask you, hey, why is the game canceled? You might say, the game was canceled because of bad weather. OK, so the official announcement will be more formalized. And so they might use the term due to. OK, if you want to be more formalized, use do. OK, due to. But if you're just 
neutral, just because is fine. Okay? Mental wants to know how to pronounce city. City. Hello, Frey from Medellin. Stir says, Coldplay's daughter was working in a fast food restaurant and her dad is rich, right? I don't know. That doesn't surprise me, you know. Um, yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all because a lot of musicians, they might become rich, but they don't want their kids to be like that. They want their kids to grow up normal. So they make them do normal things, like get a job or go do something, you know, Learn how to do something on your own. Do I teach British accent? No, Zara. Of course I don't teach British accent. I'm an American. Americans will not teach a British accent, and no British person should teach you an American accent. <laughs> Are there any different ways to say doctor? Uh, well, yeah. Physician. Physician is a more formal way to say doctor. Uh, but there are other words, too. You could say um, surgeon is a kind of physician or a kind of doctor. It depends on what kind of doctor you are, too. Um <clears throat> A general practitioner is a kind of doctor that's a general doctor, like that they, they, they see you for almost anything. Um, an internist is another kind of doctor. There's many different kinds of doctors. Sometimes we even just use the word MD. All right, let's see. Okay, apparently everybody just wants me to pronounce words for them today. Uh, but we are going to learn some etymology here in just a minute. <laughs> okay, but sunshine, the words are work, 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 weather, 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 water, 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 pray, 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 and play, play. Play. Okay? There you go. Why does everyone want me to pronounce the word water? <laughs> I know the British water, water. I know, but geez, guys, it's not that big a deal. Stop. Stop. <laughs> You're focusing on something that's totally not important. <laughs> Okay, learn the language. Stop worrying about the word water. Jeez. <laughs> it's not that hard either. <laughs> there you go. What does there you go mean? There you go means um, there's your answer or here or um, I have this for you. Right. So if I say. Uh, maybe you ask me, you want some coffee or, or can I have some coffee? I say, oh yeah, here's some coffee. There you go. I give you the coffee. I say, there you go. Here's your coffee. Okay. It looks like I'm in a studio because I am in a studio. This is my studio. Uh, Diana wants me to teach her tenses and you have a final exam tomorrow. Diana, I'm sorry, but no, <laughs> I'm not going to help anybody who wants to come to me at the last minute. No, you can't. I'm sorry, Diana. You cannot learn the tenses in one day. You should have come to me earlier. You should have come to me earlier. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the work. There's no cheating here. There's only effort. Okay? I'm sorry, but no. You can't just come to a teacher on the day before the test and then make it work. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Good luck, but next time, don't do it that way. 
study, Diana. You need time to study. Diana, if I told you I have a test in Farsi tomorrow, but I didn't study anything, do you think I'll do well? Of course I won't. Be better than that, Diana. Yeah, yeah, the Scottish. The Scottish caught it water. <laughs> what is national identity? A national identity is a word. Those are words that mean your national understanding of who you are as a person. Working girl versus working women. What's the difference? Uh... Working girl is a little bit of an older term. We don't use that as much anymore because the word girl, usually the word girl implies a younger female, one who's not mature. Okay, so the word woman implies a mature female that it can handle themselves. But a girl and a boy, those are children who can't handle themselves. So that's the biggest difference between working woman and working girl is working girl kind of implies that you're a child. And yes, Nora, I am a musician. I'm a drummer. University and college are the same thing in the United States. In England or, or British uh, English speaking countries, it's a little bit different. Okay. Uh, but in America, some people say, where did you go to college? Some people say, where did you go to university? It's the same thing. Okay. Blessing brother says I'm an undergraduate student, but even I couldn't speak English fluently. What could be your advice? You need to practice more. There are no secrets, people. <laughs> There's no secrets. There's just hard work. So if you see somebody who's done something, don't ask them what the secret was. Ask them how hard they worked. Yes, Tommy, I'm a drummer. Is there a difference between have to and need to? Robert, uh, not really. Most of the time, those things imply about the same level of need. Okay, let's get let's get on to our topic for today. Again, we're talking about English origins, so I want to talk to you about etymology. Uh, so look, we have a question there that is about etymology. Uh, the term down to earth, where does the term down to earth come from? So let's look. Down to earth. So this idiom may allude to angels or other celestial creatures coming down to earth or being cast down to join mortal humans. Um, so uh, let's see. One moment. Let me let me find another example here. The origin. Okay, so the idiom, this idiom, the origin is not entirely clear. Because remember, etymology is not a perfect science. It's a history. And history sometimes is not completely clear. Sometimes you have to kind of infer what happened. You have to guess. Okay? But... This one looks like the earliest use of the phrase down to earth comes from the early 20th century. It was commonly used. And it was used to describe the cost of certain items and how reasonable and affordable these prices were. 
So in the 1922 newspaper article in the Newark Advocate, they talked about women's clothing and they said, here are four groups of worthwhile garments at down to earth prices. Um, so the concept of down to earth, what does down to earth mean? If you say he's very down to earth, it means they're very easy to get along with. They're very likable and they're very humble. Okay. Because they are down here on earth, not up there. That's the implication. The implication is if you're down to earth, it means that you're like a, a, a normal person that's easy to get along with. Okay. So the opposite of that would be like a God. Okay. So the opposite of down to earth is somebody who thinks that they're very, very important and is not easy to get along with and is very pretentious. Okay. Um, but it looks like there's not a very easy origin story for that one, but it looks like the phrase is about a hundred years old or possibly older. That's another reason I like etymology is because etymology is still being created. Etymology is still being discovered. People are still searching and finding where does this word come from? Okay. So it's fun. Uh, Diana says, I mean, I know them, but I need a great solution to use this tenses in real life. I can only take exam. Well, Diana, again, though, I'm sorry, but in one day I can't give you, there's no tips I can give you for tenses in one day. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't help you with that. That still sounds like you want me to give you a secret. And there are no secrets. There's just practice and hard work. Daisy, where am I? I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Ohio, Joel. This is in Zhongbu. Can listening help me to improve language? Of course it can. Of course it can. And yes, reading is also good. Okay, so listen, everybody. I see many questions here, but I'm not going to answer them. <laughs> if your questions are not about etymology, then I'm not going to talk about that right now. But I have two live streams today. I have two live streams, okay? Right now, we're talking about etymology. We're talking about word history. But my next live stream in about an hour and a half, something like that, at 10 o'clock, it's 8.45 right now, but at 10 o'clock, I'll have another live stream. And on that live stream, you can ask me any questions you have. All right? But this is a classroom. I want to teach my class. How about how? Okay? Cool? Yeah? Good? All right. So, etymology. Let's talk about etymology. What is etymology? Let's start with some simple etymology that you do know. Some of you already know etymology. Okay? You know a little bit. How do you, how do you know? Uh, well, let me show you. Do you know what this means? Or this means? Or this means? What do those mean? What's the etymology of civilization? Uh, well, the word civilization comes from the word, what is it, civilitas? Let me see. Civilization etymology. Uh, so if you want to know a good, good resource for you, 
you need to go here. Etymonline.com is an etymology website. If you go to this website, you can type in any English word, and they will tell you where does this word come from. Okay? So, yeah, what does pre mean? Pre means before. What does re mean? Re means again. What does co mean? Together. Right. So, words that have... Let's let's look here. Um, so let's look at co words. Coadaptation, coadjacent, coalesce, coarticulation, coauthor. Coaxial, co belligerent, co defendant, co dependent, co dominant, co education, co efficient, co equal, coerce, co essential, co evolution. These are all words that have co in them and they mean something together. Okay? So, uh, take a look. Okay. Um, or. Words that have re in them. Uh, redolent. Redundant. Uh, re uh, render. Receive, recommend, all of those actually come from the same word. Recover, recreate, refer, religion even, uh, request. Yeah, all of those still come from the same re meaning. That's interesting. Let me see. Yeah, there are many, many, many re words, right? Meaning again, right? Rebuild, right? Redo, rework, right? So, many of you, you did learn a little bit of etymology. You learned affixes. Affixes are suffix suffixes and prefixes. Those are the things that go in the beginning or at the end of words. Okay? So, what does this mean? What does that mean? Ology. Yeah, it means the study or science of something or the, a subject. Okay. Uh, masuma, an affix. Affixes are suffixes and prefixes. Okay. So there are two kinds of affixes. There are prefixes. Those are the letters that go at the beginning of a word. And there are suffixes. Those are the words that go on the end of a word. So ology is a suffix. Pre is a prefix. Okay? Right. So biology. Biology. Bios is the Greek word meaning life. Ology is the from comes from the Greek word meaning the science of or study of. So bios, ology, biology, the study of life. Psychology, psycho meaning mind, ology meaning the study of. Psychology is the study of the mind. Any more geology? Geology, geo, means earth, means rocks and earth, okay? 
So geology is the study of the earth. Mythology, myth means stories that were created by people to, to teach something. So mythology is the study of those stories. Paleontology. Paleo. What does paleo mean, anyone? Uh, so when you, this is a fun one to look up. So we get the word pylos. No, pa, pa, is, how do you pronounce that? Let me see. Palaios? Palaios. Palaios, which means old or ancient, and ontology, meaning the science or study of. So the Greek word uh, palaios means old. Paleontology is the study of old things. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Paleontology is the study of old things. That's it. Okay. Mineralogy. Mineralogy means minerals, right? Cardiology. Cardio means heart. Oceanology. Oceans. <laughs> okay. Physiology. Physio meaning the body. Okay. Yeah. Dermatology. Derma. Dermis meaning skin. OK, so, yeah, that's why I know this stuff, because I studied Latin. It seems I haven't seen that word before. Pa paleontology? No, I knew that word. I just couldn't remember what what the original meaning was of paleo. Uh, but it's pi uh, pa palaios. Palaios is the Greek word that it comes from. And th that word means old or ancient. OK, Tommy, I'm a human being. I can't know everything. But I do know a lot. Uh, so those are all words. Let's talk to some some more ology words. Let's talk about some more ologies. Uh, because those are useful. Those are useful. Let's let's try doing some more ology words. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, do you want to see how many ologies there are? Uh, oh, yeah, there's a good one. Sam Shing is talking about insects. So this is a good one because what I'm teaching you today is called etymology. Etymology is the history of words. But entomology... Entomology is the science of bugs or insects. The science of insects is entomology. I think I spelled that right. Okay. Um, so take a look at this, everybody. That is a list of all the different ology words. Uh, so aerobiology is the branch of biology studying organic particles transported by the air. Agrobiology is the study of plant nutrition and growth in relationship to the soil. Um, wow, there's so many. Archaeology, the study of past cultures. Arachnology, the study of spiders. Yeah, okay. Uh, histology. Histo, meaning history, meaning where's something come from, right? The path of something, right? Uh, pathology is another one, pathos, right? So neurology, neuros. Embryology, uh, embryo, meaning egg. So the study of eggs, right? Radiology, radium, the study of uh, radiological things, right? Radioactive things and radiological things. Okay. 
Paleoanthropolo- well, I think you spelled it wrong. It's paleoanthropolo- and oh, now I can't pronounce it. Paleoanthropology, I think is what you want to say. Did you maybe that is right? Paleoanthropol. Oh, I think it's supposed to be L O G Y. Sam, there you go. Stur's got it. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. Good job. Okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, anthro, anthro meaning human. Okay, so anthropology is the study of humans, paleoanthropology is the study of ancient humans. Okay? Nino, uh, I'm teaching you about words that end in ology. There are many, 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 many words that end in ology. Bacteriology. Bacteriology. What is that? Or astrobiology. Astrobiology. What is astrobiology? Astro means star. That's right. Bio means what? Bios means what? Astro means star. Bios means life. Ology means study of. So astrobiology is the study of life in space. Not just the study of space. Astrology or astronomy, those are the studies of space. Astronomy is the study of space. But astrobiology is the study of life in space. Okay? Yes, A N T H R. Yes, anthro, meaning. Let's see. Oh, no, not that. There it is. Yeah, anthropos. Anthropos is the Greek word that means human. And logia, meaning study. Okay? But most of those words, almost all the words that you were just mentioning, those are all from Greek or Latin. Greek or Latin. But we have many, many English words that come from other languages, too. So, for example... Uh, the word alcohol, alcohol, do you guys know that word? <laughs> Where does that word come from? Does anyone know? Yes, it's Arabic. That's right, Zara. Yeah, it's Arabic. That's right. Uh, the, the, Alcohol comes from French, but then before that, it comes from Arabic, alcool. Alcool. The early definition of alcool was talking actually about powders. Look at that. That's interesting. So it says that um, the original meaning from the Arabic word Alcohol or alcohol means a fine metallic powder used to darken the eyelids. So it was makeup. It was makeup. That was the original meaning. It was stained paint. But why did they do it that way? Oh, interesting. Look at that. Okay, wow, 
See, this is why I like etym- etymology. So the word alcohol, alcohol is what? What is alcohol? It's a fermented product. It's a fermented thing, right? Well, the original meaning alcohol was talking about some uh, products or powders that were made from a distillation or fermentation process. So the makeup that they that they used used a similar process to create it. A distillation or fermentation process to create that makeup. So the word alcohol became used to talk about anything that was made by distillation or fermentation. Right. Alcohol is chemistry fermented sugars. That's correct. That's the scientific definition of it, Robert. But I'm just trying to say that where does this word come from? This says that it comes from uh, originally it's talking about a fine powder or a volatile liquid. Um, But by the 1670s, it was used in English to talk about any substance that was pure, anything that was distilled down or fermented down that was pure. Okay, so it became used to uh, to, to be talked about um, for, for alcohol or wine or liquor. Okay. Uh, so let's look at some other words from Arabic. What about this word? Algebra. Algebra. Algebra, the word and all of algebra is Arabic. <laughs> yeah, that's Arabic too. Uh, the word average. Arabic. The word coffee, Arabic. The word candy, Arabic. (laughs) The word hazard, Arabic. The word mascara, Arabic. Orange. Arabic pants, Arabic. Yeah. Okay. So this is why I want you to understand why is English difficult? This is one of the big reasons why, because our words come from so many places. And when they come from those places, the rules change, the rules change. Okay. And so that's why our rules are so crazy in English. That's why the rules are so crazy in English. All right? But etymology is a very useful tool for you to help you learn vocabulary in a new way that has a pattern. Okay? It has a pattern. Some of you, when you're learning vocabulary, you have no pattern. You can't learn English vocabulary with no pattern. You need a pattern. Okay, you need a method. All right, and etymology is a fantastic method. All right, so from now on, when you're learning a new word, I want you to search to find the etymology. Find the history of where this word comes from and then see what other words are related to that word. What other words are related to that word? Okay, so uh, let me see. For example, let me see if I can think of a good one for you guys. Oh, I know. Uh, We talked about this one before at one of my other um, live streams. This word. 
Do you guys know this word? Zara said it takes too long. Sorry, Zara. <laughs> I promise you, this way is a lot faster than whatever your way is. Because my way is much, much, much more efficient. Okay? Hippopotamus. Yes, it's an animal. Hippo is the shortened word for it. Sometimes we just say hippo because... Hippopotamus is too big, right? Uh, but the origin of where does the word hippo come from is pretty funny. Okay, once again, this word, uh, it does come from uh, Latin and Greek. If you look at the word in Greek, uh, the word hippos in Greek means horse. And Potamo means river. So a hippopotamus is a river horse. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. And so let's look at that word. Hippopotamus. Now I want you to tell me what is this? What's that? Anyone know what that is? So you know that the word hippopotamus means river horse. And potomology... That's right, hater. Potomology would be the science or study of rivers. That's right. Now, let's, let's show you some other fun words. Uh, so, for example, there are many, many, many words that come from this root word, of the same root word as potomology, um, potomo meaning river, that word comes from a Proto-Indo-European word uh, that just means to rush forward, to rush forward, the, the letters P-E-T meaning to rush forward. But there are many words that have that in there. So for example, um, <clears throat> What is that? A feather. Right. Wait, wait a second. This is a feather, right? The word feather also comes from the Proto-Indo-European Proto word, uh, P-E-T, meaning to rush forward or to fly. Okay? So, before Latin... Before Greek, there was another language called Proto-Indo-European. And the original word, feather, comes from the letters P-E-T, meaning to rush forward or to fly. Okay? Because, yeah, okay, to fly. That makes sense. Right? So, now, I want you to think about it for just a second. Um, do you know any other words that... The word feather, when you say feather, it has an F, feather, 
right? It has an F. But actually, uh, the word comes from a word that starts with a P. So the original pronunciation was not feather. It was more like pether. Okay? And what is this? What is that? Pin. That's right. Pin is pin. <laughs> well, take a look at this feather, everyone. Look at this feather. And what is that? Oh, wait a minute. Now I have a pin. And now, now look, what do I have now? What is this? A pen. So the word feather and the word pen and the word pin are all related. They all come from the Proto-Indo-European -Indo word that pet, meaning to fly, fly or rush forward. The word feather, the word pen, and the word pin. What about this word? Um, do you guys know this word? What is a pin? Heba. A pin is something you used um, for sewing clothes, right? So if I if I need to fix my clothes, then I need a pin, right? The little sharp piece of metal that you use for sewing, that's a pin, okay? So the word panache means fashionable or stylish. That's right. That's what the word means now. It means stylish, right? But the original meaning of the word panache meant a hat with feathers. A hat with feathers. So even the word panache comes from the word pet, meaning feather, meaning, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about the word needle? Where does the word needle come from? Let's look really quickly. Needle comes from the Old English nadle, meaning a small pointed instrument for carrying thread or woven. Okay, so that comes from Norse and German, nadel. Uh, so that comes, that word, the word needle comes from German. Well, it even looks like it goes older than that, actually. It looks like there, there is a Proto-Indo-European -Indo word and a Greek word. The word... Uh, Nein, or the Latin word nere, means to spin. Uh, so, yeah, the word needle looks like it has some German background, and it also has some um, Greek background. Okay? But slightly different. Slightly different. Oh, wow. Thank you, Avi, for the gifts. Thank you very much. Okay? But let's go back, and I want to show you, because there's so many words that are related. So... I'm trying to tell you that the word hippopotamus and the word feather and the word pin and the word pen are all related. Isn't that weird? The word hippopotamus is related to the word pen, which is related to the word feather. <laughs> That's weird, but it's true. And it, you can see how it works, right? Why? Hippopotamus means river, horse, right? And the word potomology means the study of rivers, right? Potamos meaning river. And rivers rush forward. They rush forward, right? So the word pet meaning to rush forward or to fly, all right? What about this word? This one's fun. I like this one. Helicopter.
Anyone? Helicopter. What is a helicopter? Everyone? It's a kind of flying machine, right? It's a kind of flying machine, right? But this word comes from the Greek helikos. Ah, I can't type today. Helikos meaning... Um, or no, not helikos. Helix. Helix. Sorry, helix. Meaning spiral. And it comes from the, the word pateron, meaning wing. So helicopter comes from the word helix, meaning spiral, and pteron, meaning wing. So spiral wing. Spiral wing. That's what a helicopter is. Okay? Do you know any other words that start with PT? This one's hard. If anybody gets this, I'll be surprised. Do you know any words that begin with PT? Anyone? Bingo. Mike got it. Pterodactyl. What is a pterodactyl? A pterodactyl is a dinosaur, right? It's a flying dinosaur, right? And ter, uh, tero meaning wing and dactyl means fingers. So a pterodactyl Taro means wing and dactyl means fingers. And if you look at the pterodactyl and you look at their wings, you'll see why they call it that. Because their wings had these big, long bones like fingers. Okay? Uh, let's see. Any other words? Let's see. Oh, look at this. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Hater's got a good one. Let's let let's look that one up. Mandi uh, pit pit go pit go mandibular. Wow, I don't know that one, but I'm gonna look it up, and I I can guess what it means. I can already guess what it means. <laughs> mandibular meaning something to do with your jaw. Ah, huh? it didn't come up. Let's see. Is that a word? Oh, yeah, it is a word, but it didn't come up in my etymology dictionary. Um, so, the tergomandibular ligament is a ten tendinous band of the busopharyngeal fascia attached by one extremity to the hamulus of the medical... <laughs> Medial, oh, look, there's a bunch of medical words that start with PT because there are many things that have to do with uh, wing in, in medicine, right? They describe many um, parts of your anatomy with the word wing. <laughs> okay, yeah, m but, but look, Avi said I only know mandibular. But that's, that's useful. If you know the word mandible, mandible means your jaw, right? So mandibular means something to do with your jaw. Okay? Um, that's why etymology is very useful. What is the meaning of helix? A helix is a spiral. Is a spiral. Okay? So uh, when you find a shell on the beach... When you find a shell on the beach and they have that spiral, that's a helix. Okay? Hello from Buenos Aires. Hello, hello. Uh, let me go back. There's some more words.
Right. So again, and yes, the P is silent. That's right. The, the P is a silent sound. Right. Pterodactyl. You don't say pterodactyl. Okay. But that's why when you look at the word helicopter, it's very weird because actually it should be helicopter. <laughs> Because usually we don't pronounce the P. Any word that has PT, we usually don't pronounce the P, the P. But in the word helicopter, we chose to, which is weird. Right? <laughs> okay? Uh, phoenix. What does phoenix mean? The, the Phoenix is a, is a good word. We can look that up. Sure. Phoenix. Etymology. A phoenix is a bird, and the word phoenix probably comes from the 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 Greek, uh, the Greek phon phoenix. Um, so that word comes from a story of mythology about a bird uh, that was rose from the flames. That's why we use that story to talk about that. Um, interesting. So it looks like Yeah, that one just comes from uh, Egypt, actually. It comes from Egypt and Old Greek, because around that time in the Greek uh, and Egyptian lands, they, they all had a story about a bird that rose from the flames, and that was called the phoenix. Okay? Yeah, it's Egyptian. Right. Egyptian and Greek, both. Okay, that's right. Uh, Mike says, but why in some words do you choose to pronounce some silent letters and there's no rule? Right. Mike, again, this is why etymology can be very useful. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes when you f look up the etymology, it will tell you why we pronounce it that way or why we spell it that way. Right. So, for example, I like to use the word cafe, right? The word cafe is French, right? That's why we keep the accent on it, right? But if, it, if that was a, an English word, we would pronounce it cafe. But it's not an English word. It's a French word, so we keep the French pronunciation when pronounce it cafe, Okay. That's the kind of thing that happens with etymology. All right. You'll understand a little bit more why we spell it that way or why we pronounce it that way. If you know where it comes from. All right. For example, all of the words in English that have O U G H, all of those annoying words that have O U G H, all of those words come from Gaelic. Gaelic is a language um, in uh, part of the UK, right? It's an ancient language from part of the UK. And it's an interesting language, right? So the Irish people, English, Irish, Scottish, that area, that's, that's the Gaelic language, okay? And uh, yeah, so the words through, the word though, the word bought, the word burrow, all of those come from... Uh, uh, Gaelic, right? So let's see here. Um, so the word tough comes from the Old English toe, meaning strong and firm. Um, yeah, there you go. So the word tough comes from an old English word toe, meaning strong and firm. Uh, <clears throat> how about the word though? Let's take a look. Though comes from the old English uh, there, 
meaning, however, nevertheless, still, or yet. Right, so the word though, also the word the, and the word that, this, those also come from, from uh, Old English, Old English. Okay, so yeah, this, this, that, these, those, the word laugh, the word laugh also comes from Old English. Okay, so all of those really weird words with O-U-G-H or A-U-G-H, those are Old English words. Yeah, cough also. Let's look at cough. Cough comes from Old English or maybe Proto-Germanic. It could be from German. German has a word, koken. Meaning the same thing, meaning a cough. Yeah. So there's an English word, but there's also a German word. So that one could be either. That one could be either. Yeah, like I said, these are the things. Mike, when I see words, I see where they come from, right? So when I see words, I can say, ooh, I know where that word comes from. I know that word comes from Greek. I know that word comes from Latin. I know that word comes from Arabic. I know that word comes from Gaelic. And that can help me understand how to pronounce it, how to spell it, what it means, all of those things. Okay? Tommy wants to know, how do you pronounce dentist? Yeah, dentist. Those are all, those T's are strong T's, dentist. That's right. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. That's why it's so important to learn etymology for English. If you're learning English and you don't know etymology, I don't understand how you can learn it. I really don't. It's so important to understand English. Right? So, uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions? What is etymology? Well, ology means what? <laughs> uh, Kiki, are, do you mean etymology or atomology? I think you mean etymology. Etymology means the origin and history of words and phrases. What does humanist mean? Uh, <laughs> are you asking me what the etymology of humanist is or what do you actually, you, you want to know what it really means? That's a philosophical term uh, or a sociological term. A humanist is someone who wants to do good things for humans. That's all. If you... If your main concern is being humane and doing good things for humanity, then you are a humanist. Okay? All right. Uh, so let's try something. Let's try something different this time. Test me. Give me a word. And let's see if I can find the etymology and give you a, a better way to remember that word. Okay, so give me some words and let's see if I can find an interesting etymology that will help you. I'm waiting. Bueller. Bueller. Anyone? No one? <laughs> really? No one has a question? Come on. Give me a word. 
Give me a word and I'll find the etymology for you and tell you why it's interesting. What? I've turned off the comments. I didn't turn off any comments. <laughs> I didn't turn off anything. What? How did that happen? So weird. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, everyone. I don't know how that happened. That's weird. <laughs> Thank you for telling me on my phone. <laughs> Thanks for that, everybody. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what happened. I must have accidentally hit that. Okay. All right. Wow. I've got lots of words now. Okay. I'm sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I was yelling at you. I'm waiting for you, and you guys couldn't type. <laughs> All right, let me try to get some of these words for you. All right, let's see. Uh, how about procrastination? That's a good one. Procrastination. Procrastinate comes from the Latin word procrastinatus or procrastinare, meaning to put off till tomorrow. So the word procrastinate means procrastinate. <laughs> this is funny because it shows you that people have been putting things off until later for thousands of years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for thousands of years, people have been putting things off for till later because the word procrastinate comes from a Latin word that means procrastinate. It means to wait till later. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There's one. Anthropology, we already talked about before, Marshall. Uh, anthros meaning people or humans and apology uh, uh, or I should say ology meaning science of or study of. So anthropology is the study of humans, really. Yeah, the science of natural history of man. Okay, let's do another one. Echo. Let's do the word echo. That one's old. That comes from Greek, I believe. That comes from a, a Greek, uh, Greek story, I think. Uh, so, let's see. That comes from the Greek word catechesis. No, no, no. Wait. How's that work? Let me see. Oh, there it is. Okay, no, from the Latin, from the Greek word echo, meaning, um, yeah, so there's a Greek story about a, a mythological nymph that lived in a mountain and was in love with a man named Narcissus. Uh, and so do you guys know, this actually has a very interesting background, both of these words. Do you guys know the story of Echo and Narcissus? Anyone? Echo and Narcissus? Do you guys know the story of Echo and Narcissus? No one? Okay, let me let me guys let me tell you guys the story. So Echo was this nymph. A nymph just means like a we'll just say a female creature, okay? Um but Echo was cursed by the gods so that she could only repeat the last words that someone else said. She couldn't say anything unless you said something first. So if you said, hello, Echo could say, hello. If you say goodbye, Echo could say goodbye. So the, the term Echo, 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 that's where that comes from. Okay. And Narcissus, 
the word narcissist. Narcissist. A narcissist is someone who only loves themselves. They don't care about anyone else. They only care about themselves. And Narcissus was a, another uh, Greek myth about a man who uh, he, he loved himself too much. He thought he was so handsome that when he looked at his reflection in a, in a, a lake, he saw his reflection in a lake and he thought he was so beautiful he couldn't look away. So he kept looking. He was stuck staring at the reflection forever. So the word echo comes from a Greek mythology, a mythological story, a Greek myth about a woman who could only repeat the words you said. And narcissist comes from the Greek word about Narcissus, who is a man who fell in love with his own image in uh in the mirror okay and then he drowned that's right yeah okay so there you go <laughs> there yes those those stories are real are those stories real well heba those stories are greek myths did uh, did somebody really fall in love with them face i don't know <laughs> maybe did someone really curse them i don't know maybe but they're real stories yeah they're real stories they're thousands of years old. Sure. Okay. All right. Let me see. Did I get any other good words here? Let me, let me see if there's some other ones I can check here for you. How about this? Um, colossal. That's a good one. Colossal comes from the Latin word colossus, which comes from the Greek word kolossosos, meaning a gigantic statue. Okay? Because do you know what this is, everyone? Has anyone ever seen this picture before? Has anyone ever seen that picture before? This is the Colossus of Rhodes. That's the Colossus of Rhodes. So the meaning Colossus means a, a large statue. It means a giant statue. And the reason why was because there used to be a very large statue called the Colossus in a city called Rhodes. It's not there anymore. Uh, let me see. What, what does it look like now? Uh Let's see what it looks like now. Here's what it looks like now. Take a look, everybody. There you go. That's what the Colossus of Rhodes looked like in 250 BC. And this is what it looks like now. It's not there anymore. Okay? So the original word Colossus or colossal, a colossus was a giant statue. So the word colossal means big. That's it. <laughs> okay. All right, let me see. I think I have time for just a couple more, everyone. Let me get a couple more in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mike wants me to do nepotist. Nepotist is a good one, too. Nepotism. Uh, nepotism comes from 
the Latin word nepotismo. Oh, that's interesting. It comes from the Latin word nepote. Which means this. Nephew. Did anyone ever notice that? The word nephew and the word nepotism both start with N-E-P. <laughs> what is nepotism, anyone? What is nepotism? Do you guys know? What is nepotism? Nepotism is when you hire your family to work for you. Okay? So... If you have a business and you need to hire someone to work for you and you could hire anyone, but you choose to hire your family, that's nepotism. Yeah, that's nepotism. And the word nepotism, originally, the Greek word means nephew. <laughs> because you were hiring your nephew. You were hiring your nephew. Right? That's, that's always what it is. Uh, this is my nephew. He, he's going to work here now. <laughs> right? <laughs> so there you go. The word nepotism comes from the Greek word nephew or grandson. Looks like it also means grandson. Nepos means nephew or grandson. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Uh, okay, let's see. I have just a couple more minutes. Let me see if I can find a couple more words to look up. Uh, let's see. Ambivalent. That's a good one. I like that one. Let's take a look at that one. So any word that starts with MB means both. Ambivalent. What does ambivalent mean? Anyone? To be ambivalent about something, what does ambivalent mean? If you're ambivalent about something, it means that you don't really care. You don't really care one way or the other. Like, you have conflicting feelings, right? So, uh, to be ambivalent means that if it, if, if, if they win, okay. If they win, okay. You're ambivalent, okay? Um, and the word ambivalent comes from the Latin ambi, that means both, and valentina, meaning strength. Okay, so ambivalent. Ambivalent means... It comes from um, ambi, means both, and valentina means strength. So if your name is Valentina, now you know what your name means. <laughs> Oh, no, sorry, not Valentina, Valentia, Valentia, Valentia means strength, not Valentina. My apologies. Yeah. Uh, but the word va valere, valere means to be strong. Do you guys, whoops. Valere, sorry, I spelled it wrong. Valere means to be strong. Uh, do you guys know this word? Valor means to be brave. Yeah. And so valor comes from the same word, uh, valere, meaning strong, strong in Latin. Yeah. Right. So valor in Portuguese means value. Okay. But probably because, again, Portuguese comes from Latin. 
So the re- the the meaning in Latin means strong. So value strong that makes sense to me. Yeah, to have valor is to be brave and courageous. Yeah, because you're strong. Okay. Okay, everybody, listen, I need to end this live stream because I have another live stream starting in just a few minutes here. But before I go, don't go yet. Please don't go yet. Come on. I was just here for an hour and a half for you. So just wait one minute. (laughs) Uh, If you enjoy my teaching, please, please, please make sure you hit the follow button. Okay? Um, I am here. Uh, five days a week. I am here five days a week. So make sure you follow me. I have about 42,000 followers now on Hello Talk, and that is awesome. But I want uh, more than that. I need more than that because this is my job and I need to make money. So I wish I didn't need to make money, but I do. So If you would like to support me and you want to uh, buy me a coffee, you can go here and you can make a donation to support me. I'm not being paid, so your your support is all I get. That's it. Okay? Um, So, yeah, you can buy me HelloTalk coins, too, but... A hundred HelloTalk coins is one dollar. So, I have about 10,000 Hello Talk coins. That means people have given me 10,000 gifts. That sounds like a lot, right? That sounds like a lot. I got 10,000 gifts. That's like $100 for a year of teaching. <laughs> okay? So, Hello Talk coins are okay, but those are not going to help me. Not really. Okay? Yeah, I've been teaching here for over a year, and the Hello Talk gifts that I have gotten have been about $100 for a whole year. That's right. <laughs> okay? That's why I have a Buy Me a Coffee page now. Okay? Uh, buy me a coffee is a better way to support me if you want to help me. Okay. And yeah, Adam said it. If you don't have money to support me, if you can't send me money, I understand that. I totally understand that. I don't have money either. (laughs) Okay. But if you don't have money to support me, then you can support me another way. Please go tell some people about my live streams. Okay. If you're, in school, go tell your classmates. If you're at work, go tell your your uh, workmates, your coworkers. If you're, you know, maybe you, you have a language group on Facebook or a language group on WeChat, go tell them about it. Okay? Go tell them about it. All right? Please do. Uh, in, how can you do that? Here. Here's my QR code. Take a picture, please. Take a picture of my QR code. Yeah, Avi, that's kind of how I feel about it, too, and that's why I don't know what to do about it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, there's my QR code. You can take a picture of that, and then anyone can follow me using that QR code. Okay, I'm here five days a week, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I do about 20 hours a week for you. Okay, so yeah, make sure you share. And I will be back in about 15 minutes, everyone. In about 15 minutes, I'll be back, and I have another live stream. And on that live stream, you can ask me any questions you have. If you have questions about grammar or idioms or vocabulary or pronunciation or culture, fine. Okay? So I'll see you guys back here in about 15 minutes. Yeah? 十五分钟，等我一下，好不好？可以吗？<笑>
Okay? I'll be back in just a few minutes, everybody. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for following. Please come back and see me in just a few minutes. Bye, everyone.